Hey TV fans, Bored now back with you on this video. I will be talking about Star Trek Picard Season 3, Episode 10. It is called the, the Last Generation. It is the season finale and it's the series finale. This is the last ever episode of Picard, or so they're claiming anyway, and it certainly feels with it like it with the big epic and emotional rounding up with the old characters and the introduction and the setup for the new characters and the the next generation moving forward which potentially could get its own spin-off they're definitely flagging that up or setting that up as something which could happen by the end of this episode it did cross my mind if there might be another season of Picard but except with Jack as the lead but I think it's more likely to be a spin-off with that crew but more on that later so overall this was a really strong finale it was a very enjoyable finale it did pretty much everything it was supposed to do than you would hope for once again it's very pleasing to the fans and there was some epic moments there were some tense moments some good character moments very little to complain about in this finale. Now, I've been up and down on this season. More than most, the majority of fans, especially if you're a hardcore Trek fan, especially if you're hardcore into Next Generation and have fond memories of watching that growing up, then by and large, this has really ticked a lot of the boxes this season. And the overall consensus is that this is the best season of Picard. Personally, I disagree. I still think season one is the best season, and I know that's a bit of a hot take, but overall, I prefer season one to this season. I would probably put this as number two above season two, because season two became really bad by the end. It it lost its way after a promising start, and it was a season which was really frustrating because it was shaping up to be something good, something really good, and then it just nosedived in such a way that it ended up being very mediocre, very disappointing, and at times very messy. So I would definitely go with this as better than season two, but personally I would still say season one is my favourite season but that's just my personal choice certainly in recent weeks and in the few episodes leading up to the finale they've turned things around with this season like they have ended it in a satisfying way and it's ramped up and it sort of won me over after a couple of really dodgy episodes later on in the season or, or earlier in the season I should say I do have one complaint about this finale, or one big complaint anyway, and that is then I just think they could have been a bit bolder. I think they could have made a bolder choice with the outcome of things when it came to Picard and Jack and the whole Borg situation. And it's this weird thing where in the writing they seem to be selling it like Picard is going to sacrifice himself and this is his grand goodbye speech to all his friends and and the way it's sold in the scene with Jack and on one hand I give them credit for at least giving us stakes and at least making me think it was a possibility they were going to kill off Picard but on the other hand, I sort of just think they chickened out a little bit. I, I, I kind of think it was set up in a nice way for them to do that. And I just think it would have made a lot of sense. It's the last episode of the show. And this is being set up as definitely the end for Picard as a character. Like, as far as going on missions go. And it was set up nicely as one f last mission for the original next generation crew and I, I just think in a way it, it would make sense thematically wise for him to have gone out and sacrificed himself now I know there's a bit of a logistics problem because Jack was there in the scene as well and for a while they were setting it up then it was going to be Picard and Jack both going out and they clearly have plans for Jack they're clearly setting him up as the next Picard for probably maybe a spin-off but 
you know, they could have done a bit of a rewrite on that, but that is my one complaint, really, my one big complaint from the finale, because I just think they could have been a bit bolder, they could have went... They could have resisted, like, the full-on feel-good ending. I get why they did it. Like, they really don't want to send fans away on such a bummer. But I just think sometimes that sort of ending is the bravest. And and it makes the most impact. And it, it just reminds me a bit about the fifth season of Buffy. Which I know in the end wasn't the final season. But certainly at the time it felt like this was the way to end that show or or just ending that season with her sacrificing herself sorry spoilers in case you've not seen that but it it just makes me think what an impactful death that was what an impactful sacrifice and it just seems with some of the other things they've done with the writing and in this episode with him kind of saying to Wolf and Riker I've got to go and be a dad now it just felt like it was a nice setup for him to sacrifice himself and that that would have made the most sense so that is my one as I said big complaint but overall it was a strong episode a good way to to end things and so you get this situation I like by the way the Chekhov cameo at the start now it, it was meant to be Chekhov's son we we only hear his voice over like communications because he's like communicating to the rest of the Starfleet and and the ones who haven't been infected and just warning that they're sort of coming for earth and that they're turning like all the young against like the elders that kind of thing now I'm going to speculate here that they might have used the real Chekhov, like the actor's voice, because it was just a voice and it did sound a lot like him, rather than just casting someone and that it's just meant to be the son. But I don't know for sure. I just thought it might have been just because of how much it sounded like like his voice because they could have just used a recording or, or something like that but that was a nice bit of nostalgia which didn't hit you over the head really but they get to this situation where they work out then then the borg and what they're doing is a bit like a hive where they they go into earth so they go into conquer earth so that immediately ra- raises the stakes and they start speculating whether Jack might be too far gone, whether his human side has been lost totally to the Borg. And Picard is is determined to believe that his son is still in there, that the human brain is still in there. So Data pulls up this, this technical thing on the screen where he can actually go into Jack's head and... Once again, I guess futuristic technology, don't question it too much, but... Yeah, he actually finds out that the human brain, the human side of Jack's brain is still in in existence. So then one of the big character beats with Data in the episode, which I do like because in the end he's crucial to their victory, is then it's actually his task to to infiltrate the ball cube and, and actually reach Picard and, and Jack and actually make it so the ship can get to them to rescue them and it's one of the best scenes of the episode because you get the funny line about I'm going to rely on my gut and then Geordie sort of deadpans back to him like okay we're relying on Data's gut and it's just set up as this big thing and it's just another fun scene with Brent Spiner and with Data like just being a bit more quirky and showing emotions whereas he doesn't normally but that's been part of his journey whenever we've seen him in Picard and in this season especially where it's like I think it's Troy at once says is he having fun and and you see him just like sort of almost getting like so excited at playing with this computer and the technology so so that was fun and I like the Nitz Data who has a crucial role in finally getting to them but Picard, Riker and Worf go go aboard go to like the, the site of the hive to try and get to Jack and, and try and get inside his head 
and the three of them beam down. And Worf has a great line, so this, I'll make it a threesome, because, like, Riker and Picard volunteer first, so Worf's like, I'll make it a threesome. And Riker's like, can you hear yourself? And, and Riker and Worf's back and forth have been some of the best stuff this season. So so they get to Jack, and they sort of realise then it could be too late, and that they can't like do anything there and then but that's when Picard realizes then he might have to sacrifice himself he's the one who has to go and do it especially because of like his history as being part Borg so I think there's some padding in like this section like scenes that could have been lost or cut down but Riker and, and Wolf stay behind and this is part part of the bit where they're giving you this emotional sense then this could be it for Picard then he's going along to to sacrifice himself and do what's right by it for, for to save his son and they're selling this all well where this speech is in this episode and people saying goodbye because Picard says it's been an honour to serve this crew or to lead this crew, it's all giving you this sense that, yeah, this could be the end for them, or certainly some of them might might not make it. There's a funny line later from Worf where he's like, I was beginning to think maybe we would survive or something. But So Picard goes, and you get this big battle where the Ball Queen's there, he's trying to talk to Jack, but... The Borg Queen is saying things like, this is where he belongs, and then saying, welcome home, this is where you belong, Picard. And Jack is just so far gone where he's kind of saying, this is my destiny. And Picard is trying to unhook him, but it's like too late. And Picard actually goes inside Jack's head, like because he hooks himself up. So they're both in, in this space where they're both being controlled by the Borg. So he goes inside this this space to talk to Jack and it becomes this big back and forth where he has to try and convince him. And this is at the point where Jack is saying to him, but this is paradise, I'm happy here. And he has to try and convince him that living as a human is like worthwhile and there's more value to it and that there's people if he chooses the human life who are there for him and ultimately he tries to say you're the best thing to ever happen to me and he gives this very slushy but it works for the scene like fatherly type speech but it doesn't seem to be working it doesn't seem to convince Jack and finally the only thing that convinces him is when Picard makes it clear then if you don't leap out of here, if you stay here, then I'm going to stay with you and I'm going to sacrifice myself. And eventually that's what pulls Jack around. And he makes the decision himself because he unhooks himself and he unhooks Picard. And that's when they decide to leave together and the Borg Queen's screening. But at the same time as all this is, is going down, you have, like, obviously the crew on the Starfleet trying to infiltrate the 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 Borg cube and they come to the realisation then they've got a choice to make. They can either try and they can either well, they can either blow up the cube and take out the Borg but also the people on it, which include Picard, Jack and I guess Worf and Riker or they can make the bigger decision, which is to save Earth, because that's where the Borgs are heading. So it, it's obviously this this bit of a dilemma where they would have to bite the bullet and lose lovely loved ones if if they made the other decision, if they made the original decision. And it, it, it's fitting that it's Beverly who makes the call, she makes the call that, no, we've got to do this, this is the right thing, and that is to blow up the cube, whether Jack and Picard make it out or not. Now, they communicate Riker and Wolf because because they've stayed, stayed behind and haven't been, haven't, 
like got into the hive and it means they can be communicated and they can be beamed up because they're still in the clear to be beamed up but Riker is willing to stay there and try and get Picard and like just sacrifice himself so that they're told like or just wait at least another minute but that they're told they've got another minute before they make the decision. And Riker has a good line about, after all he's given me, I can give him at least a minute. So they go off. And it seems like a long minute, but I think the idea is then they sort of launch the shot and then it's meant to slowly run its way through the whole of the cube. So it takes a while from the time they shoot, but... You've got all this going on, all these stakes and tension, and at the same time, you've got Seven and her crew who have locked themselves into like the bridge on on the other ship because they're being pursued by a, a bunch of Borg who, who have taken over. Well, Starfleet members have been taken over by. The Changeling, sorry, not not the Borg. So they're in danger. And there's some good comedy with this guy who who is left on, on the bridge where he's like this trainee chef and, and he's trying to talk his way out of like flying the ship for Seven. And Seven's very demanding and just says, hey, you know, you've got flying experience. That will do for us. And it's a good scene for Seven and she's very commanding. It's a bold thing to say, maybe, but I actually think Seven might be the MVP of this episode. I I think she's really good in this episode, like, the way she commands this ship and has a very good, like, personality and and just has some quite big character moments as well. But I do enjoy a lot of this stuff. But you've got different things all going on at the same time, so you've got the the tension with Picard and Jack and with the Borg Queen, then you've got like Seven and her crew being pursued and like trying to fight back. You've got the um the Borg Cube is starting to fire back at like the Enterprise and, and the other characters. So you've got all this going on and eventually obviously Picard and Jack escape and they escape with Riker and with Worf, and we get the big emotional end into the episode. So, so just to repeat, I, I, I do wish them Picard as had sacrificed himself. I realise for some that that might have been a bit of a downer, but I just think it's the bold choice, and I, I actually think it would have made a lot of sense because of a, a lot of things they were doing in the episode with him. I also think it's a bit of a weird thing to say, but and because of the mid credit sequence, it turns out we, we do end with Jack, but I sort of just wish then the main final shot was with Seven and her crew at the end, because I just think, because the message is this is the next generation and we're moving on, I actually just think that would have been a bit more fitting, but... They obviously wanted the big final stuff with Picard and crew, so we we get all this like roundup stuff. So we find out the data's being counselled by by Troy to to help him get in touch with his humanity. We find out well, we we find out then Raffi out of the blue has had contact from from her grandchild and told them she can have access and see her so she's going off to do that that just feels like a bit of a nothing where okay it makes sense to give Raffi the emotional and the happy ending but like it's been such a nothing plot then there's not really that much riding on it but her and Wolf get to like say goodbye properly and and have a hug and they get to mention like say we are warriors to each other and and also a good line from Wolf earlier in the episode with Riker is when he says 
it is my honour to, to die, it's a good day to die, or something like that, which is a callback from later in the season, or earlier in the season, I should say. And in one of the bigger scenes, Seven, we find out Seven is captain, or made captain, and, that, and that's at the request of of Shaw, who's now departed, because there's a scene with Chewback, Chew, sorry, Tuvac, where, where it looks like he's going to fire her for insubordination, breaking Starfleet regulations. And it's it's a great scene, again, for Seven, because of the way she stands up to him, and she, like, cuts him off, says, I, I can save you any more trouble. And she she quits, basically, that that's her whole thing. Like, she she's determined that she did the right thing, so she just quits. But it's, it's a little bit of a cheeky, the way the scene's written, because clearly Tuvac is indicating in the scene that he's going to fire her. So it, it's just played that way so that you, there's a bit of a twist when he plays her the transmission, which is a recording from Shaw. So the recording is, is basically him acknowledging Seven as a true like captain material for the first time almost and that uh, he's saying yes she was a renegade yes she broke all these rules but sometimes these rules are broken because they're meant to be broken and and he recommends her being captain now whether that would really be enough for Tuvac to change his mind I don't know but maybe you could read it as Tuvac was having a bit of fun with Seven like making her sweat or trying to make her sweat but by making out he was going to fire her you you could sort of read it as that I guess but but in the end because of Shaw's recommendation he give, he makes Seven the captain of, of the ship now so she now has a crew so it's Seven as captain Jack is, is working with them he has a big role and then you've got Sydney and, and also Raffi's there so a bunch of like the newer characters along with Raffi and that's sort of the end of the episode mostly because you get Jack Picard and Beverly are on their way to to Jack's first mission and it turns out that they've like re-updated and, and brought back the Enterprise and named it the Enterprise so the ship they, they would have been using so the Titan they've just changed the name to Enterprise basically and just made it look more like the Enterprise as a tribute to Picard and what his crew did so it's revealed then Jack now is going to follow in his father's foot, footsteps as if there was any doubt and they go off on their first mission and that's where it's setting it up I think for a spin-off especially with the mid credit sequence so that's fine it'll be interesting with Seven as the captain because arguably she's already got a full arc as a character but there's definitely more you can do with her you can definitely do more with her as a captain and it makes sense and it's someone like her who's a bit more seasoned rather than them just throwing Jack in as captain or something like that so I mean I, I would be up for seeing more of Seven as captain without doubt and then we get the big like emotional ending to the episode which is just Picard and the original next gen crew in in the holograph the the bar and they're just toasting and just saying things Oh, actually, speaking of that, one thing I'll point out about the stuff with Seven and her crew is then there's a fun little moment where they're debating what Seven should say, like her line, before they, they, they shoot off, and it's like repeating the different lines, like engage and let it be so stuff. So they're having a fun little meta moment where they're not, not nodding to the audience, and... In the end, Seven doesn't say anything and the ship just, like, f shoots off. So I wasn't quite sure if we just don't hear it and that's the point. So it's just playing with us as the audience. Or if it's more like she made a choice not to say anything, like she doesn't have a line just because that's 
something that's been done so many times so that's almost her saying that was then this is now and I'm not gonna follow their footsteps you could definitely read it as that but then we get the just the nice little friendly end stuff with the next gen characters in the in the in the bar and Picard doing this grand speech like only he can and they just end up by like gambling and just having a a lot of fun and there's a lot of like banter going on and we sort of get the credits with an aerial shot of them all gambling and having a good time and just yeah relaxing that that's the way to sum up the scene it feels very relaxing and then we, we do get like a mid credit sort of cliffhanger where it returns to the Jack stuff. And it appears to be sometime later. I wasn't quite sure if this was maybe after Picard had passed away or something. I'm not really sure. It didn't make it clear. I, I just wondered because he was looking at a picture of Picard and Beverly, but whatever. The context of the scene is that Cube appears out of nowhere. And, and Jack... I guess guesses rightly who it is. I'm not quite sure how he knows who Cube is, but there's just something about the way P- Q presents himself. Then Jack said, "Ah, oh, it's Q." Like he obviously knows from his father's story, and he says to him, "I, I thought my father's trial was over with you." And Q says, "Picard's trial is over, but yours is is very much." just beginning and that's that's like the cliffhanger so this is well it's not really a cliffhanger because this is the end of Picard but it's definitely a lead into what I expect to be a spin-off show with Jack and and the other crew now and it's once again setting up Q as like a big villain which is a strange choice considering once again he's a character who's had plenty of time in Next Generation, and also has appeared quite a bit in Picard. It, it it seems like a bit of a weird choice. It's like, well, history repeating itself, and if it's well handled, then I can live with that stuff, but it's just a little bit of a strange one if they're going to return to the Q stuff, having already done that quite a lot in the previous shows, but... Maybe he'll only feature a little bit, like maybe he'll pop in here and there. We'll have to see. It could just be one of those endings, who knows. But they do seem to be signalling it as a spin-off in the works. So that's Star Trek Picard, the final ever episode. Also, we're led to believe the finale of Season 3. Overall, I enjoyed it a fair bit, and the season did recover after a really rocky start and some rocky episodes early on. Uh, uh, Ups and downs, but they at least brought it back around and gave us a satisfying last few episodes. I still prefer season one, but I know I'm in the minority, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below like and subscribe let me know what you thought of this finale do do you have any complaints how have you thought about the season overall and would you be up for a spin-off with seven and her crew jack obviously featuring quite highly how would you feel about that if they went down that route so let me know what you think And I'll be back with more TV reviews, more movie reviews soon. So take care, guys. See you again soon.